uh, okay, so um, first thing is um, today is the chapter review and the concept check stay. And uh, about, a, about a third of you have done the concept checks. And um, for whatever reason, you guys want to, you know, uh, uh, keep them until the last day. Um, if you're using them as a review, that's fine. If you're if you're not doing your concept checks just because you're putting it off, yeah, that's not as good. Um, so what I did do is I went and marked all of the concept checks that weren't done as missing, because I think some of you guys kind of you know you, I shouldn't even say think. I mean I've seen a, about a billion students do this. You look at your grade and you see your grade is currently good, and so it just doesn't even enter your mind. Um, but the way our grading program works is if there's not a score entered, whether that's a zero or whether that's a full score, it uh, doesn't count it against you. So, you know, if some of you haven't taken tests, if you haven't taken whatever, um, your grade looks different. And... Um, so what I did do is I, I went through and I marked, um, I went and marked all of your things as missing so that you would know what your grade would be if you don't do it. And then as soon as you take, as soon as you take your, your concept checks or your quizzes or your tests, whatever, um, it automatically will put your score in and then adjust it from there. Um, but you know, it, it doesn't do that for homework. It's just kind of a quirk of the way the grading program works. Um, so do know that I've been trying to check for those of you who make up your homework and I change your score, you know, so that it doesn't say missing. Um, but you guys can always feel free to send me a message if there's something I haven't seen in your set of grades and work, okay? Um, I have terrible eyes. Um, and the grading program is one big giant spreadsheet. And so it's very difficult to sometimes spot if you made up a missing assignment. Um, I look for them, but it's not always easy to see. So do know, you guys should kind of be keeping track of your own grades and things. Um, and then absolutely let me know if something's not quite right. I, I don't take it personal. Um, I, I actually appreciate it if you guys double check your own information. Um, I, I don't have a problem with that. I, I, I'm sure you've had some teachers who, who take it personal when you like question something in the grade book, but uh, I don't. I, you know, it's, it's, your, it's your grade, it's your score you've earned, so I don't mind talking about it. Uh, okay, so let's uh, let's do some of the review together. Because I have a feeling you've probably forgotten some of this because it's so long ago. But I also think that you'll find it really easy uh, now that we've been doing the harder material. So it says, use prime factorization to find the greatest common factor of each pair. I will say, on the test, all that you're being asked... Oh, let me get the marker. All that you're being asked on the test is what is the greatest common factor. Okay. So you don't have to use a tree. You don't have to use, you know, whatever method. And the reason I say that is because I bet some of you could look at number two and already know the answer is 25. Because number two is, you know, kind of like money or it's easier numbers in your head. Um, and so it, it's just kind of more common knowledge. Number one is definitely harder. But on the test, I'm just going to ask, what's the greatest common factor? So whichever method you can figure out is fine. I'll do number two with you and show you how to do the tree method, um, because that was kind of the more popular way to do it. So the tree method is when you split it up, and you list any two numbers that multiply to make 75. So maybe what I should do is I can, I'll call on somebody, and somebody can kind of give me the breakdown as we go. Um, let's go with um, Sydney. Sydney, can you help me break down 75? The, 
That's, uh, oh, actually, you know what? I think you're thinking of this. You're thinking of this when we list all the pairs. So a factor tree is slightly different. A factor tree, well, the information you said was correct, but you don't usually choose one <laughs> because one isn't like anything. So you are right, but what's a different pair that makes 75? Oh, what? You? Okay, quarters. <laughs> 75 cents is three quarters. Yeah, 75 cents is three quarters. So three, what happened to my marker? Three quarters, 325. Okay, now out of these two numbers, Sydney, can either one of them break down further? Perfect, three is prime. So 25 can be, what? you keep going back on mute. <laughs> are, are you in the classroom today? No, no, you're at home. Well, then you got no reason to unmute. Okay, uh, what did you say for 25? Perfect. And then those are both prime. So this is done. So 75 is 3 times 5 times 5. Excellent job, Sydney. Thank you. Um, Sophie, should I just go in alphabetical order today? I suppose you guys might hate that. I don't know. How about 125? Perfect. It's five quarters. And, uh, 25 can be, okay. Um, and this one's actually done right away with three fives. Okay. Nice. Um, Sophie, if you can, can you remind, can you remind everybody, um, if you know five goes into 125, but can't think of the other number, how do, how do you figure out how many times it goes in? Like, what do you do on your calculator? Do you remember how? Uh, I mean, you could. Yes, that's that's definitely what I was looking for. Um, you were you were kind of making it more difficult, but that's fine. So if you can't remember what goes into it, you can always use your calculator to divide by it. And then so five and twenty five make one twenty five. Um, is Zoom being kind of weird today? I I see a bunch of people uh, keep dropping out and coming back in. I don't know if that's what's happening or let's see, are you guys in the school? Maybe that's the school internet. That would not shock me. Okay. Um, if, if nothing, if your, if your computer, if your internet is being weird today, um, I, I am making sure to record all of this for you. So, okay. Excellent job on the two people so far. Let's, let's move on. <laughs> I feel, I feel bad for Ben. <laughs> I think he I think his internet has been kicking about like ten times so far. Um Ben, can you hear me okay? Yeah, um if any so if Ben can't hear me, uh I wouldn't be surprised. But somebody else in the classroom, it, they can let him know that if it's not working, that's fine, that he can just stay out and then do his work or whatever. Like, I get it. He doesn't have to keep trying to come back in. It keeps booting him out or something. Uh, okay, so the greatest common factor, it says factor, right? Greatest common factor. And this is what you guys are probably somewhat used to. Um, Alex, can you help me with that? Do you, or uh, Otherwise, I can certainly... Um, I can certainly walk you through it. Sure. So factoring by greatest common factor means that you want to look what they have in common. So how about number wise? What number goes into both of them? Oh, sorry. <laughs> You're right. That is actually pretty important. <laughs> number three. 
I forget that you guys can't always see my mouse. Perfect. So I'm going to put this out front. How about letter wise? Okay. Good. And then what we do is we divide by 3x to find out what goes in the parentheses. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. x squared divided by x is x. Excuse me. Plus 9 divided by 3 is 3. And then no x's. Uh, let's see. Okay. So it's, it sounds like most of the people in the classroom today are having issues. Um, for everybody at home, is, is, the, is the call coming through okay? Okay. All right. Weird. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to hear that, guys. Um, that is easily the most frustrating thing is when it's not working right. Okay. But I'm quite excited. I will probably be back in school uh, before April. So, uh, although then the people at home would have to deal with me using the school internet. So. You win some, you lose some. Uh, do you guys want me to do more of these great uh, factor by greatest common factor with you? So today, today is me kind of. Oh, geez, sorry. Um, yeah. Okay. I will do, let's do five, because that looks like the next hardest one. So let's do five. Um, AJ, I'll, I'll try to call on people who aren't in school the most, because um, I, I think we'll probably have more success with that today. Uh, AJ, do you think you could help me with five? Or not. Uh, oh, you are there. Okay. So, yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, so I, I guess what I will say, I've, I've definitely gotten quite a few messages on people having issues. Um, I'll get the recording up as soon as possible for you guys so that you could, um, you know, just play it off of YouTube. And in that case, it shouldn't have any issues. And it, it usually gets uh, converted pretty quickly on YouTube. And uh, so in that case, I will make sure not to spend too much of your hour today doing this review so that you guys can have time to watch the review if you want. Actually, you know what? I'll type that because I bet some people can't hear it. I'll just write it up here. Now, I know most of you aren't using the Zoom app because I don't believe the Chromebook 
has an app for it. I think it just makes you use the Chrome browser. Um, on the Zoom app, it usually shows signal strength. It, is it showing my signal strength as good? It doesn't show me. It's kind of weird like that. But the person running the meeting usually has a signal strength meter kind of on the bottom corner. So if it's my issue, I can possibly quit and come back, but I suppose nobody's using their, I suppose nobody's using the app then. Okay. Well, let's keep going and we'll do as well as we can. Oh yeah, Alex. Um, <clears throat> You, you absolutely can, you can get the Zoom app on, on Mac and on PC. And I don't think you can on Chromebooks. Um, I, I, if anything, it might be an extension. Um, but they still use the Chrome browser regardless. That's just kind of the way Chromebooks are built. Okay. So I will finish AJ's problem here. Um, uh, he, he said that 7AB is the greatest common factor because 7 goes into 7 and 14. They each have a single A, and they each have a single B. So that's the greatest common factor. And then if I divide it away, I would get 7 divided by 7 is 1. A2 divided by A would be a single A. B divided by B would be gone plus 2, no A's, 1 B. So that's called factor by greatest common factor. And then the rest of these you're probably more familiar with because they're recent, and we, we end up using it quite a bit. So the factor by grouping. Um, Ella, do you think you could help me with... Uh, six or seven, your choice. Okay, smaller numbers is usually a common choice. Yep. Okay. How would you how would you do this? Um, are we talking about all of them or just because you have the right idea? But the first step in a factor by grouping is to split it in half. And you do exactly what you said on the left half and on the right half separate. So how about the left half? What do they have in common? Uh, okay, true. Uh, I could write a 1 if I wanted. Um, otherwise, I thought, you're gonna, I thought you meant 1x, so I just wrote it already but they both have an X. <clears throat> but you're absolutely right. I could write a one. Um, and then what would be left over if I divided by the X? So two divided by one would be two. And then X squared divided by X would be what? Oh, I think you mean the second thing. Uh, so there'd be an X right here. So X squared divided by X would leave one X. Okay. How about the second half? Do you think you could just tell me what to do on the second half? Good. What would be left? Okay, I, I bet you said the first part and I just didn't hear it. Okay, very good. Do you want me to go to somebody else for the next step, since you've done quite a bit already? I certainly can. You did very good. Thank you. Um, Isabella? I don't, I can't remember if your, your microphone wasn't working yesterday or something. Okay. Oh, got it. 
So we were going to finish up six. So Ella went halfway through. Good. Perfect. So you write what they have in common first. Um, I can put the same on here if I want. And I, I say put it first. It doesn't matter if you put 2x plus 3 first or second. But excellent. Yep, good job. What what college did, did you guys go to? Uh, okay, I was going to say UNC is awfully far for you to make a day trip. Okay, NDSU, that's cool. We'll tell her I'm proud of her. That's cool. Um, let's, I think we should move on because factor by grouping is, they're all the same. I mean, like, they're slow, but they're all the same. Uh, the three term easy, let's just pick three of these. And I kind of guarantee that once you guys remember, once you guys remember about them, they go real fast. Oh, actually, I should make sure to pick one with. Uh, there we go. Minuses. Uh, uh, Luke. Luke, could you give me a hand on one of these three? Otherwise, I can walk you through the beginning of begin, beginnings of it. Sure. Thank you. I can. So the three term easy is is when there's no number on the x squared. And you're looking for what numbers multiply to 10 and then add to 7. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll write down what you were saying, but we don't need to do that. So uh, I think you were saying this okay this way would work um, and so if you did this you would still get the correct answer like you'd have to split it in half and do factor by grouping so you would get the correct answer it's just longer um, the easy method why these are called three term easy is once you figure out the two numbers you can just write the answer immediately actually and that that only works for this method Oh, great. That was not a highlighter. Yeah, no, you were, the way you would have done it would have worked, though, too. So, I mean, that's fine if you do it, do it that way. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, Mason, do you think you could help me with 11? So we are trying to look for what factors of 20 can add up to negative 9. And because there's a negative, I have to kind of include negatives in my factors of 20. So these are all the ways you can multiply and get 20. Which, which pair along this adds up to negative 9. Okay, so see how these two numbers multiply to 20, but then I'm also I'm also looking to see what they add up to. And I need to pick the pair that adds up to negative 9. Okay, perfect. Do you remember how to write the answer then, once we've found the pair? Okay. So once you figure out the pair, then you're just going to write these two numbers next to the x's. And then that, that's your answer for factoring. Um, so... Given, given that, but thank you, Mason. 
uh, given that we've gone through a bunch of these examples, and I, I can definitely tell you guys are having trouble remembering how to do some of the ones from a while ago. I'm hoping that you guys are writing down the problems and the work like I am. Because in your notes, if you guys have the problems and the work, this is something that's really helpful for you when you take the test. Because say you're taking the test and you're told to factor by grouping. Well, then you can come and look at this at your examples for factor by grouping and remember how to do it. Like this is this is a pretty important study tip for you guys because it, it works that way in all math classes. Um, I, I know I know this method doesn't always work for every type of class, but for for math it's pretty you know uh, pretty solid advice. Um, Logan. Do you think you could help me with 15? Okay, excellent. Do you, and I can help you out if you want some help. Correct, correct. And I, do you want me to write down the factors of 80? Or I should say negative 80. Okay. Um, so we've got one. This is going to have a lot, isn't it? Three, no. Four, yes. Five, 16. Six, no, seven, no, eight, yes. Okay, so this is all the factors. Which one would make negative two? Good, good, good. So how do I write the answer? Perfect, perfect. So on the three-term easy problems, this is exactly how you can write the answer kind of immediately. Um, Murph, let's go with you. Uh, my question is, do you remember, do you remember how to tell a three-term easy problem? Like you should be able to look at it and figure out which ones are three-term easy. How, how do we do that again? I mean, obviously, three terms. <laughs> okay. And what else? What makes them easier? Right. The, oh, so you're going to say about the answer itself? <clears throat> uh, I guess my question is, how come how come this one isn't a three term easy? Okay, I, and it, it's it's okay if you're having a hard time saying why. Um, I can tell you mean correct because you're right. This one has more steps. These are easier because there's no number on the x squared. Thank you. I can't remember on the test if you're told what type it is. So if you're asked to factor on the test and it doesn't say what type, if it has three terms and the x squared term has no number, this is the easy method. Okay. The three term hard is, is exactly what, what Murph was saying, how it has a bunch of steps. Okay. And what's going to make it three term hard is there are, 
Okay, seriously, Phil. There we go. Shut off. What makes it three term hard is three terms and a number. I'll abbreviate. I know you guys think this is hashtag. I was shocked a lot of students over the years didn't know this was the number symbol. But you guys have never had to use a normal phone. You guys basically all use only cell phones. On a normal phone, you had to use the number symbol a lot uh, before it was coined hashtag. All right, the three-term hard method is what Luke was describing to me last time. So the three-term hard method, you start by multiplying the outer numbers. Uh, oh, that one's even worse. That'd be 120. I was going to say 60 is big, but number 18 is worse. Uh, so I look for the factors of 16 that make 19, and I'm just going to pretend that I write them all down, and I'm going to tell you 4 and 15 works. So once I get the pair that I know, then I write, instead of 19, I write 4 and 15. This is what, this is what Luke was trying to tell me. And then now that I have four terms, this is called factor by grouping, where you split it in half, factor first half and second half differently. So, mm, uh, Desmond, Desmond, can you help me with this one? <laughs> yep, yep, 2x goes in both. Okay, what about in the parentheses? Perfect, perfect. Okay, good. Good, those are the same, so that's a good sign. I want them to be the same. And then, um, do you want to finish it, or should I go with somebody else? Either or. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Excellent, thank you. Correct. These, these take longer, so you're obviously not going to have many of them because of the number of steps they have. Um, they're not horrible, they're just slow. They're really slow. And um, please ask away if you guys are having questions. How um, How is the sound now? I wonder if it is must be working slightly better because I'm hearing people better too. Um, who hasn't gone? Nora? Nora hasn't gone. Oh, good. Uh, Nora, um, do you remember how to factor using the perfect square trinomial? Uh, or would you like me to try to walk you through it? Or... I certainly can. So the perfect square trinomial method was when we had those formulas with the A's and the B's. So this one matches up with A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. And if your formula matches up with that, then you can write the answer as A plus B squared. This The second one is almost identical except for it has a minus sign in it. So then your final answer is A minus B. Um, I'll let you pick whichever one you want. I mean, they're both just as same. Oh, actually, no, we should do 20 because 20 is harder. It's probably better if we do a harder one together. 
Okay, do you kind of remember what to do from here? Or um, do you want some more advice? Whatever. I can. Don't, you don't have to feel bad about it. Okay, so what we did next was we tried to figure out what A and B were, because they were kind of the, they're the key thing to us being able to write the answer. So I'll look at the 25 first, because it's slightly easier. Um, what squared is 25? Yeah, okay, so that is B. So if I want to be able to write my answer, I know I can write minus 5 in place of B. And then we'll look at A. So what squared is 9x squared? And so you can't, yeah, yeah, I was going to say you treat the numbers and letters separate. So A is 3x, and then our answer would be 3x minus 5 squared. Good. I mean, yeah, you, you definitely did the hard part, which is figuring out, like, the 9x squared. That's that's where the mistakes will usually happen. Okay. Okay, good. Um, should I just leave it open for anybody? I don't, I think I've called on most people who are able to be called on. Um, does anybody remember how to do 21 or 22? Oh, wait, I didn't. I didn't call on Sadie yet. Haroon's mic is usually too quiet. Um, yeah. Um, Sadie, do you remember how to do 22? Otherwise, I can kind of walk you through this one as well. Okay. So the difference of squares method was similar to 19 and 20, except for you match up a different formula. So if your equation is written like this, your answer can be written like this. So pretty much, pretty much all the work is us figuring out what A and B are. Um, so what squared would give you 49? Okay, perfect. And then how about this one again, although this is a duplicate of 20. Um, what squared is 9x squared? Okay, good. So 3x times 3x would give you 9x squared. So that's A. And so our answer can be written as A plus B times A minus B. Almost all of the work is figuring out what A and B are. So that's the difference of squares method. Thank you. And then 23 and 24 are on here as kind of a little bit of review from last chapter. I, I don't even know if you guys need me to review them with you. I doubt it, but I don't know. Do you want me to review one of these with you? Okay. Okay. Yes, we've got one sure. Uh, all right, I'll pick 24. That's the hardest. So multiplying out is the FOIL method. So like I'm going to take 3x times 5x. 3x times 8. Then minus 7. Here, I'll, I'll get it all fancy. Minus 7 times 5x. minus 7 times 8. So this is the FOIL method. Um, this is... I don't really have any good colors to use. Firsts, outsides, insides, lasts. And then you combine together things when you can. So like plus 24x minus 35x can go together. Uh, minus 11, I think. I don't think it's minus 9. Yeah, we'll go with 11. 
So that's that's multiplying out and foiling. That's this is just kind of review. Um, it was technically at the beginning of the chapter. Um, we we had to do it last um, hex semester because the beginning of this chapter came after um, holiday break for everybody, so we had to review multiplying out. I don't even remember if it's on the test. I don't think it is. Okay. We have a half hour left. Um, use, use whatever time you have left to finish the review. Turn that in. Take, actually, let me write this down. Since the sound isn't working great for everybody. Here's your checklist. Okay, now I've, I know I've said this multiple times, but I'll repeat it in case somebody hadn't heard it before. Uh, you are welcome to take the test tonight if you don't want to take it in class tomorrow. So especially because we only have a 45 minute class tomorrow, uh, I didn't want to have to force everybody to rush their test. Uh, I think 45 minutes is probably plenty of time for you though, so I'll, I'll say that. I just know that some of you get very anxious and feel rushed. So the test just needs to be taken by the end of the school day tomorrow. And it opens up third hour today. And take it whenever you want. Um, if you want to take it in class tomorrow, you can. If, you know, whatever. But I am taking attendance tomorrow. So, you know, log in for attendance and then I can mark you here. Otherwise, you guys are welcome to send me any questions if you have them, whatever. Um, I'll stay on Zoom if somebody wants some help with anything. Otherwise, use your time to finish up work. Thank you guys for coming today. See you tomorrow. Yeah, you're welcome.